I'm Chris P, and a couple years ago I decided to get together with some artist friends and record our conversations while we draw, and maybe have a couple drinks or two. It's probably not funny, the audio quality is not so great, we broke the 180 rule and had to flip the master shot, but if you like listening to artists talk about drawing and shit that happened to them, then maybe this is for you. It's called The Tongue and Pencil. This is uh, t the tongue and pencil. It's like an experiment. I'm trying where we draw doodle pictures and bullshit a little bit, drink a little bit. And we got uh, Sean Solomon Hello. with us tonight. Hello. How you doing? Good. How are you, He's Chris? Art art artist, artists, animationer, <laughs> and uh, musician, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, start, we can start oh, drawing we can pictures. Start now. So check it out. Uh, I like to start these things with like. Uh, Where'd you grow up? Um, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. Yeah. Which is a cool part of LA that's not LA. How'd you like that? I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> it's where they film all the porno. Yeah. Have you been there, Chris? Yeah, what part of the valley? I live in the valley, technically, now. But I didn't uh -oh. grow up there. I grew up in the Oh, you live in the valley? Too. Where I in the valley? I live in Studio City. But it's, I still have a 323 area code in my house. Wow. So it's not I still have an 818 area code. Dude, this, I already fucked this up. This pen's no good. I don't actually know how to draw. <laughs> we'll work with it. This is cool. I'll make it, I'll make it work. Yeah. That's what we do. We make it work. What kind of pen you're using? It? Do yeah, it's one of the... I got, like, dumb hand where you smear it everywhere. Yeah, that's fine. Do you have dumb hand? You should see the one. I smear it all the time. This tongue and pencil in the corner there, that stamp, always gets smeared. Smeared. That's what always happens. So, you grew oh, up I grew in the valley. And, yeah. What part? My parents still live in Encino. Ah, Encino. That's the place. I know about Encino. I've been to Encino. Isn't that where? Where was uh, where the where the uh, Karate Kid move to? Did he move there? Um, I don't know. This is a little about the Cape Man. You remember the movie with the Encino Cape Man? Man? Yeah, yeah. I've never seen that, but everyone talks about it in Encino Man, and I've refused to see it. Yeah. You're against it. Yeah, I don't know. Isn't it Polly yeah. Shore or something? Does he Might watch be this Pauly podcast? Shore. Whoops. It's probably sure it's Brendan Fraser is the caveman in it. That guy from The Mummy. You know the guy from The Mummy? Yeah, yeah. I love The Mummy. Yeah, The Mummy's pretty good. Oh, by the way, hey, cheers. Here we go. Cheers. Right on to, to cartoons and stuff. <laughs> um, so, yeah, your folks. So what was your relationship with, like, with your folks? Oh, this is going to get dark really fast. <laughs> um, my relationship with them. It was pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. My mom's always mad I don't go and see her, even though she's in the valley. Yeah. <laughs> she thinks I should go see her. But didn't, that's far, you know? Didn't you make a film about your folks? I made a film about my parents. Yeah, did you see it? Did I ever send it to yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I gotta ask, like, a, like, people don't know about these things for yeah. the purposes of this interview. It is secret, though. It's not on the internet. Oh, yeah? Do it's my only secret it? film. No, it's chill. I interviewed my parents. Yeah. It was my student film at CalArts before I left. Yeah. And I interviewed my dad for like three hours yeah. and then my mom for like an hour and a half. My mom was less into it. <laughs> um, and what was the result? A two minute thing where my parents were weird and, um, you know, they didn't. They liked it, but they asked me not to put it on the internet. So, <laughs> so far, you've complied. Yeah, and I like having a secret film. Yeah. <laughs> like, if anyone's like screen a thing, I'm like, oh, I got the thing for you. Yeah. And have you screened it? I've screened it. Any secret. Yeah, film I screened film it. Screenings? Yeah. What I only kind of secret film screen. <clears throat> I only submitted it to one film festival because it was free. Yeah. It was auto. Uh, Ottawa, yeah, in Canada, and it was in that. Yeah, how'd that go? Uh, I wasn't there. I have no idea. It was pretty cool. I like it. Remember we we hung out in Annecy. Oh that yeah, we hung out in Annecy. Festivals. That one's in in France. Yeah. I, oh good. man, Annecy. Yeah. Did you like Annecy? I liked Annecy. I was in a big fight with my teacher yeah. at Annecy. Actually, 
Um, I hope he sees this, which he won't. He doesn't. He probably doesn't know how to use the computer. Um, but he like, <clears throat> I guess like I went to the Cal Arts graduation this year, and someone was like, told him his name's Paul Vester. He's got one glass eye. It's a black glass eye. That's pretty cool. And uh, I think it's it's only black because he's trying to scare all the children, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, he someone Did he was, scare you. He didn't Did scare you, me. Did he. Scare somebody? I had a class where, like, we organized a festival or a screening at the Annecy Festival, yeah. and I, like, didn't really do a lot in the class. Uh -huh. So the teacher was like, well, since you didn't do anything, maybe you could uh, make the poster. Yeah. So <laughs> I made the poster, and then he was his, her, he was her husband and saw the poster and, like, started giving me notes and made me change it, and then they ended up not using the poster, and then we were in France eating a fancy dinner that he was paying for and he was like i'm sorry about the poster <laughs> and i was like fuck you he, dude is that how he speaks yeah he's got a funny accent yeah and i was like fuck you dude that's my poster i hate you and then <laughs> my friend i went to cal arts yeah for the graduation my friend told paul vester she, she was like sean solomon's coming and he he said oh no oh no yeah that's how and then said that i hated okay. cal arts which is untrue i loved cal arts you love cal arts huh Huh. When I was, I was there, about that. it was cool. It was pretty yeah. chill. I learned a lot about like how to stand in silence at parties and <laughs> stuff like that. So how'd you go about going to Cal Arts? Um, it was the only school I applied to mm -hmm. because I didn't want to go to school. I wanted to play That's in right. a rock and roll band. Duh. And everyone's angry in the thing I've drawn so far. That's right. <laughs> um, Angry's okay. And I told my mom I didn't want to go to CalArts. I was like, I don't want to go to CalArts. It's too much money, which is true. Mm -hmm. And she was like, just go for a year and see if you like it. And so I went for two years, and then I dropped out and ended up making cartoons. And that so seems it worked. It's common at CalArts, right? There's a lot of people they don't finish because there's opportunities to be had making cartoons and stuff, right? Yeah. Is that the case? I think that Yeah, everyone just steals life. everybody from CalArts. Yeah. Like, you were one of the people that wanted to steal me from CalArts. <laughs> that's true, that's true. But everyone at CalArts, like all the teachers when I dropped out, they were like, hell yeah! Cool! Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome! Congratulations! Yeah, because they know. Alright, that's the way uh, the industry that's works. Cool. Like, your, your diploma is not really very important. Yeah. It's more about like making relationships and developing a style and if you have that sorted then you're in good shape. Yeah. But I made that zine I gave you. Yes. And then That's true. Then left. Everyone I gave a bunch of people my zine. Yeah. Did you make a lot of zines? Yeah, I went I snuck into the character animation department, which I was not in. I was in the experimental animation department. And so I what's the difference between those departments for people who uh, know? Experimental animation is f if you want to put your stuff on Vimeo and <laughs> characters for YouTube. Yeah, gotcha. Mostly. <laughs> no, they're, they're like pretty different. I guess they think, uh, they say that experimental is animation as a fine art mm. and character is more of animation as like a commercial thing. Yeah. So my art, obviously, for all the people looking at my drawing right now, <laughs> close zoom in of drawing <laughs> it's a bit fine art obviously yeah but it's cool i really and like a lot of directors go to for experimental but they're pretty similar in a lot of ways Ex but it experiment i guess experimental doesn't have really any required classes you get to kind of make your own schedule did and character as a million kind of schedule did you make i mostly yourself? took music classes yeah so it made sense yeah, to I'm leave drawing a furry by the way i'm drawing some weird looking dude i don't know who he is yeah. So you also have done a lot of musicking, right? Music. Is yeah, I've been doing the music. Yeah. You took music classes, right? You yeah, I didn't, wasn't so good at the music classes. The, uh, <laughs> were you doing music before you, you went to Yeah, I played in a band yeah. with uh, a bunch of my friends for like all through high school and then after high school. And even when I was going to CalArts, yeah. I was playing in the band. And now I have a new band with some of the same guys. So... Uh, how many bands have you been in? Probably like 10. Can you list the names of all the bands you've been in? Could you remember? I can try. I was in a band called 
uh, Moses Campbell was the one I was in the longest. Mm-hmm. And then a band called Heller Keller. I was in a band called Keychain. I was in a band called Better Whatever. I was in a really short-lived band called Bonassus and the Gnome Fly. I still don't know what that one means. That was five right there. All right, keep going. There's five. Um, I was in a band called Endless Oxygen Party when I was 13. Um, that's six. I was in a band. A lot of these bands didn't really do anything. Can I name all the bands? Name all of them. <clears throat> okay. I was in a band called Syndicated Apple when I was a little kid. I named that one. I was in a band called Hey Axel. These are most of those. Those are all middle school bands. I was in a band called The Feenies in middle school. We didn't have any music. That was more of like a conceptual thing. I played one performance as Luke Warm in the Crying with uh, my friend Pauline. Um, I've got a few rap projects right now. I've got King Solomon. It was one of my rap projects. It's a good name. Deli Meats. Works well for you. There's just too many, really. Um, to name so how many of these bands <laughs> is uh, Pascal in Pascal's been in like most of them yeah that, uh, he's in Moaning oh Moaning is my new band I should have mentioned yeah, that's, that's your, the one that's actually playing that your current band yeah and that's the one I think will stick uh, hopefully yeah. and that one's cool we just went on tour being in a band's not as easy as being a drawer yeah for some reason yeah I don't know why because everyone's in a band. Harder about it. Everyone's in a band. Everyone has their opinions about bands. Um, nobody likes anything. There's Spotify. It's so easy to listen to things. But with drawing, there's all these people that like are like, hey, I don't know how to draw, but I like have a shoe company. Could you draw a logo? Or I don't know how to... An- or especially animate. No one knows how to animate for some reason. Have you noticed that? <laughs> I guess. I mean, I guess I, I'm sure. I mean, I don't. I don't meet a lot of people. I mostly know people who are like who animate? do animation. So I guess I don't. I don't know that. I just know people who do animate or draw pictures and stuff. I think there's less people that animate than play music. I think you're right about that. That's an astute observation. You get a point for that. Boom. Um. So, what do you like better? What do I like? Do music like? or yeah, animation? Or do you like one better? I think, well, I think because animation takes so long that music is more instant. So if you feel sad or happy, you like write a song and it's, it's finished when you're done playing it. Or, you know, but when you're doing an animated thing, you, you're happy, you're sad, you write a script, you storyboard it, you design the characters you animate it you in between it you see it you send it to korea if you're lucky and then you watch it like 400 million years later and then you're like hmm is this good still i don't know did i even make this yeah i know the feeling uh so they're just they're different i guess is what you're saying yeah they're different i like both of them i think the animation is more exciting in a lot of ways because you're like what is this gonna look like yeah and then you get to see it. Music is just like, you know, I mean, if the people listening don't know the difference between music and animation, like, I'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Music is like uh, something you listen to with your ears. Yeah. Animation is more of like a looking like thing. Look at it. You can listen to it. You can. But you get it. It's a different experience. Yeah. Should I do, well, I should do funny voices in the thing. You could, yeah. You is gotta, this a video or is it just? A... Your... We do. There's pictures. Look at all these cameras. Yeah. The uh, the uh, what's it called? It's the uh, I don't know what this is gonna be. I We're ruined this piece decide. of paper. All right, well, You're gonna have to throw this one away. That's fine. Um. So yeah, look at that. You changed yourself a little mustache. That's making it in the cut. Dan's gonna put that in the cut. A little mustache. Cool. Uh, just so everyone knows, there's Dan's over here. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> we pan it up. The first time I met you. So um, the first time I remember meeting you was uh, when you came by uh, Brent. I think you had been in contact with Brendan Small. Oh you yeah. Guys came over. 
to like get a tour of the studio and kind of talk about how cartoon pitches work. Yeah, he was. Do, do you remember that? Yeah, he was giving some good advice. Yeah. How, do you remember that the meeting at all? Do you have any takeaways from that? Um, learn, learn he was like, things? I don't know. Brendan Small has like. Uh, has a lot more confidence than I do. Yeah. And he was sort of like, you just fucking go in there and you tell them that this is the best idea ever and they'll buy it from you. Yeah. That's it. You know, like, I just, we just did the, uh, the last one of these I did with him, right? Uh-huh. And it's funny, I just talked to him the other day and we're about to make a new, a brand new cartoon. With him? Show with him, where he essentially did that. He's like, fuck yeah, I just went in and they bought it in the room at, a thousand different networks and we're totally making it of course he did and i believe so in, and by the time it's a big secret now but by the time this goes on the internet it'll probably it'll be announced and stuff oh so this is okay that we're talking about it yeah i guess i'm just saying it's a we'll edit it out as we're far as they know this, right? we're lying you know yeah but i'm not lying it's the truth are we gonna edit this this is gonna be edited a little bit like what i say is like if you say something really bad like once like the interview with Brendan afterwards, he's like, "Hey, that one part, could you edit that out? Because I don't want anybody to feel bad." Are you able to edit out all of it? Yeah, <laughs> we can. Just we'll just show the, yeah, we'll just show maybe the, it could just be we'll instead just of podcast your, your voice. JPEG. We'll get like um, Tom Kenny to do oh, your yeah. voice. Hi. Yeah, and he'll just he'll just be the guy doing your voice. I think that's. I'd it. be into that. Yeah. I'm fixing the drawings. Yeah, I'm not drawing anything new. I'm just fixing the old ones. I'm using the big guy, the big sharpie. What are you all using? Right. Good. I'm using the, the little one. The, uh, no. I met you again at the Liquid TV screening. Yeah, so then that, that was our next thing because we optioned, like, when we were making that Liquid TV show, we optioned some of your, like, short stuff that you did in school, right? Like, yeah. Really, like, morphing heads and stuff. Yeah. Was I, it was like weird morphing heads, right? That's mostly weird morphing, morphing heads. heads. I tried to make a really, like, epic thing at CalArts and then failed and the last week before the films were due I made these th those three shorts yeah <laughs> well they're the ones that got on the liquid TV yeah so who you know epic who needs it right? I feel like I'm taking up too much space you're not gonna have anything to draw on my thing alright I'll figure it out okay <laughs> is this interview going bad <laughs> I think it's going okay. I think it's going great I'm just making sure <laughs> the uh <laughs> So the, the, the liquid television, that screening was kind of like a, a, a in, in pretty insane. I remember, uh, like, I think one of the big mistakes was just like having the bar open the whole time and everybody just kind of got insanely drunk and was they were running around in the aisles and not paying attention to the cartoon. Yeah, no one like, was watching. Nobody was watching anything. It started glitching out in the middle. Yeah. And uh, there's nothing worse than the, um, watching a screening with your thing about to air. Yeah. And your thing is, my short was like 15 seconds. Yeah. And then all the cartoons started freaking out. And uh, I remember I'd asked uh, Eric Andre to perform to do the thing that we used to call the tongue and pencil, which is now what I'm calling this because I like the name and I didn't want to come up with a new name. Yeah, I understand. Um, was uh, where we have like people draw pictures and then the comedians do their act and they kind of it's kind of like improv -y. where do you even remember that him doing that you probably don't because nobody was paying attention to it and it just became this horrendous clusterfuck and i remember being real nervous about like oh fuck i asked him to do this and it's all going down in flames and apologizing <laughs> to him afterwards he's like are you kidding like i live for this shit like the more fucked up the situation <laughs> yeah, the better Eric's it is insane. for me and I came to learn that that's true with his TV show and whatnot. Yeah, like, I saw him. I guess he lives by me, but he was at this coffee shop by my house the other day. Yeah. Writing the new season of the Eric Andre show. Yeah. And he was telling me some of the new stuff he's got going. Yeah. It's good. totally insane. Yeah. I remember seeing some of the early stuff, and I don't know if it ever. Or he did they ever show the stuff where he was Ronald McDonald or did that? Yeah, I think like, that was a part of his pilot, and then yeah, they like yeah. later released it. I know they didn't put that in the TV show uh, initially. I'm glad that they finally did. That's good. Yeah, so the liquid television, right? Yes. We did that. And then that's kind of like when we started talking about 
maybe making cartoons and stuff. And uh, that's where I met your buddy uh, Pascal, because you guys had the thing uh, for Sherbert. Yeah. So that's what is that about? For Sherbert is about me and my friend Pascal. We're in a band, but we tour in an ice cream truck. And we never make it to any of our shows because people always stop us for ice cream. Right on. So I think I might have asked you this at one point. Did you ever see uh, the Cheech and Chong movie, Nice Dreams, where they're in an ice cream truck? No, but you mentioned that to me. I realized I ripped the idea off, so I threw the idea away instantly. <laughs> that same thing happened with The Matrix. I thought I wrote The Matrix yeah. before I saw it. There's a lot of movies like that where I think I wrote them and then I see them. Uh, what other what other ones besides the Matrix? Uh, the Notebook. I've never seen it, but like, it sounds pretty similar to an idea I had. Yeah. Um, Harry Potter. I thought I wrote. Oh. Um. <clears throat> some of the new movies I wrote, and then I come out. I'm like, I had that idea a year ago. Yeah. That always happens. You know, I had somebody uh, talk to me about a cartoon about uh, drug sniffing dogs at the airport who get addicted to drugs <laughs> and I was like I hate to tell you this but George Clinton actually pitched that cartoon to me like five years ago George and Clinton a song about it yeah his was called Dope Dog or Dope Dogs and it's about <laughs> a dog that gets addicted to coke because he sniffs so much coke at the airport who knew you never know somebody has the idea yeah that's why I like I'm scared of ideas now I'm yeah. scared to have them because yeah. someone might take them so yeah. I've been been trying to have less yeah how's that working out it's pretty good <laughs> been watching a lot of TV yeah and trying not to really like you know what's great for not having ideas what jacking off yeah I recommend it All yeah that that's weird that you say that because most of I, my ideas come when I jack off oh well to each his own yeah what good ideas have you had jacking off hope oh, uh, think that there's good ones uh, I well, so I had some good ideas for Kickstarters while jerking off. Yeah, what's your favorite one? One of my ideas, uh, it was uh, a Kickstarter to have more money to make all the other Kickstarter ideas I had. Right on. That day, um, one idea was to make the biggest cookie ever, but I realized it's really hard. The biggest cookie was pretty big. It was like the size of like a football stadium or something. So I gave up on that idea. Um, let me what see. if you do a Kickstarter to do the biggest cookie? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, but it was yeah. too much, yeah. too big. Yeah. What about the smallest cookie? Anybody ever? You know, what's the smallest cookie? Do I don't know. know. That's a really good question. That would be way easier, I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um. So Kickstarters. Have you done a Kickstarter? I've never done a Kickstarter. I feel kind of afraid to ask people for money. Unless it's like a really good idea. And all my ideas have been pretty good. But I don't know. I need to pick the best one because I have so many Kickstarter ideas. Yeah. The, uh, we've been involved with some like Kickstarters to it's been a pain in the ass. I don't recommend it. Yeah, it sounds too complicated. It you know, it's like winning the lottery or something. Everybody wants it, and then when they get it, their lives are ruined. Yeah, I'd rather just, like, steal money or, like, <laughs> you know, or do something really half-assed without the money that I would need. Yeah. You don't have anyone emailing you, hey, when is it going to be done? I ordered it yesterday, and it's yeah. still not done. That sucks, that's not good. And especially when it's not even your Kickstarter and you're getting those emails. Yeah. So you just helped other people with Kickstarter. Yeah, I learned that don't let people say they're gonna animate their cartoon at your studio or else everyone will just think it's your Kickstarter and then you'll be on the hook for, you know, the perception of it. Kickstarter. You ever hear of those fights in Ben Nudes and called it, uh, what is it, some work, uh, was it in Indiegogo? Yeah, I heard it in That's Indiegogo. That's like Kickstarter, <laughs> but you don't have to get all the money. It's too hard to draw and talk at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's just stop. A lot of people find that. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm in the zone. Yeah, 
That's true. It's all in pretty the zone bad. Of talking or in the zone of drawing? Uh, in the zone of drawing. He can edit it so it looks like we're talking. When we're drawing. Okay, I'll just so do so some a B roll footage. Is that the B roll? All right, let's do it. Now That's we don't have that. to talk at all. No, no, it's not at all. We'll just, uh, what is that <laughs> called? ADR? Yeah, we'll ADR it. Um, That's an industry term. Yeah, you ADR. know what it stands for? Yeah, um, adding uh, dope uh, ring terms. That's exactly right. You know, uh, yeah, I used to think it stood for automatic dialogue replacement, which I thought was pretty like not in descriptive because it's not really automatic. There's no automatic in it. Yeah. You have to do it. When did you when did you learn? What? When did you learn the truth? When we had to do an ADR session and then everybody just brought out their phones and started recording ringtones and they were pretty dope. Has anyone used this thing yet? No. You should straight up use it. I'm gonna use it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where. I'm glad somebody's finally using it. Yeah. This. I um, thank God this thing's here. I can <laughs> draw these shapes without yeah. it. You know what that's for? What's it for? It's called an erasing shield. So it's basically meant for like erasing tiny parts of things. Oh, so I'm using it the wrong way. Out. Yeah, but that's all right. Well, there's, it's hard. This is the better way. It is. It's probably better. I'm teaching. This is a tutorial. Yeah. Should I describe? Oh how yeah. So it? so. You're talking about tutorial, right? To get back yeah. to, so do you have like an approach to your art? Do you, do you talk <laughs> about those things? Do you have any of that, those uh, big thinking thoughts? Well, as you thoughts? can see yeah. by the bad drawings on my page, which you can't see yet, but I got really used to draw, drawing in the computer, and it's ruined all drawing for me. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know how to draw by hand anymore. I got a computer, I got a Cintiq, I got a big tablet. Yeah? I mostly, I draw the one half of the face and then I copy and paste and flip it. Do you, uh, do you use undo a lot? <laughs> I undo a lot. I use smooth. I use the smooth tool. Yeah, you can't do that on pieces of no, paper. No, on pieces of paper it just looks like shit. But you don't have an erasing shield in the computer. That's true. So erasing is more difficult than the computer. Yeah. You don't have the shield. Jesus, freestyle it. Computers ruined everything. They did. That's basically what you're saying. Yeah, they made, music. They made everything better. Did they make everything better? They made gaming a lot better. Yeah. Uh, before, when you tried to Photoshop without a computer, it was super hard. Yeah, it's true. Like, Oregon Trail. When they had to like fake like pictures of Lee Harvey Oswald, or whatever, yeah. it was really hard. They had to use airbrushes and yeah and stuff. Now, like I made uh, fake IDs when I was in high school, and that was like. I guess Photoshop existed, but it was only for like super rich people with like really fancy good computers. It was like Photoshop one, and uh, I didn't have it, so I had to use like pictures and press on letters. Wow! And, and then uh, friskets, frisket paper. You even know what frisket no. paper is? What is frisket? It's like paper? you cut out shit with an exacto knife. Do we change? This is where we change. This is where we get to see the fun surprise. Are you ready? Like, look at the other person's drawing. Is this part in the video? Yeah. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Does this make it in the video? Yeah, it does. We don't even know. Um, this is like. Do I show you? You ready? Yeah, well, I'm going to see it. Too. No. You did draw me. Oh, I peed myself. Yeah, you peed yourself. So cute. Oh, this is good. I like it. Oh, you drew the S thing that everybody draws. That's I awesome. drew the S thing. Yeah. I drew. I'm, I was trying. I don't know what I was doing. Oh my God! You drew SpongeBob. Wow. <laughs> the, uh, I drew Hey Arnold. We're so similar. That's true. Yeah. Well, you just drew a bunch of SpongeBob stuff. Well, you know, whatever. I don't <laughs> sure. know. Why. I have already forgotten what I drew. The second that I handed to you, it's like a baby that doesn't know if they can't see it. They don't yeah. know it exists. That's how I feel about that drawing. I've drawn it, and now it's gone. So now, do I go... Oh, you did one with the skinny pen, and then you went to the fat Yeah, pen. see how bad the skinny pen one is, though? Also, I, I kind of like it. It's a little schmeary, but that's fine. It's schmeary. I'll redo that same character on here. <laughs> All right, right on. This is really good, like Chris. It. Ah, this is good, too. Ah. All right, let's see. Uh, all right, so... Uh, you said you want to say anything more about art technique, about your Oh, approach. yeah. Um, 
No. <laughs> you approach it <laughs> okay. differently than you do uh, with uh, the music. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I draw a lot of the same stuff again and again. Yeah. What's your favorite subject matter to draw? Uh, I like to draw people. This is the hardest part to talk and do this because you have these word bubbles. I have to think of funny yeah. thing. But you can draw a picture. And you don't yeah. have to write sure. pictures. Yeah, with drawing, drawing is different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> drawing is quite different than music. This podcast should be called "Drawing is Different Than Music." Yeah. There you go. You can call that. Call it that. That's what we'll title it. I like. We should put titles on the end of these. Let's title each one. Give it. Yeah. Like, interview. Doodling whatever with Sean Solomon, and then the title and fancy script will say, "Drawing is different than music." That's what you said, right? Yeah. yeah. You did it. Thanks. That helped. You're welcome. I'm helping, kind of like create this podcast. Yeah. You're gonna be. So I should be getting royalties. Yeah. You can get all, all that the royalties YouTube money. that the internet has to offer. So many royalties. Does it have a lot? Yeah, like seven, eight. Seven or eight cents. royalties? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh... I'm not doing too well. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I like this. I'm real sweaty. That's like me in real life. Actually, Well, I had all this free time. I kept adding to it. Yeah, I think, uh... I interpret that not as I peed myself, but as crotch sweat. That's, that's just crotch sweat. Accurate. It's summertime. Yeah. It's pretty hot up here because we have to turn it's off. So hot in here. We have to turn off all the fans and shit, or else they uh, they make too much sound on the audio track. We learned that the hard way. Oh. Do you ever hear of signal to noise ratio? It's like an audio term. Someone I think you just me. made that up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's really a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you want the the um, most signal to the least amount of noise. That's what they say. I think. I guess I never cared that much about drawing. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so is that your style? Yeah. I just don't care that much. I guess I think it's more important what the word bubbles say next to the drawing. Do you get like hung up on like trying to draw it well? Yeah, I get really mad about it. Yeah. Because everyone's like thinks that they know how to draw, but then all they draw is like good things. Yeah. And who wants that? You know, like some of my favorite drawings are really ugly. Yeah. I like ugly drawings. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your favorite? Do you have like? Are you? My favorite artist is influence? Chris, yeah. from the guy who runs Tip Mouth. Oh yeah, that guy. Do you have like, like folks who influenced you? With this? Yeah, Did actually, a lot of people that have been on this podcast have been big influences. Yeah. Like yeah. You. Like uh, JJ Villard. Yeah. He's who a good actually? One. He's pretty fancy. He's good. I saw. Did he his, go to your school? He went to CalArts, and yeah. not when I was going there, but I saw his student film. Yeah, someone that was really me. good. It was, I think it's one of the best. Yeah, really like that one. And someone showed it to me. They were like, I think you're going to like this a lot. And so I watched it. I was like, this is amazing. Wow. And you um, did like it. Who was that? They knew you so well. Johnny Gomez. Johnny Gomez. Student at CalArts. Knew about it. He was friends with JJ, and uh, it was when I was at CESA, the summer program for high school students. Mm. But I love JJ. And then Travis Millard, who you had. Yeah. Is that how you say his last name? Millard or Millard? Yeah, you got it right. Millard. Millard. Yeah. I just assumed it was Millard. No, that's, that's, uh, that's the fancy pronunciation. <laughs> um, I don't think he uses that one. Yeah, I don't think anyone should. Hey, this thing on the side here is, you know, it's for you to test shit out. Okay, yeah, I should have done that with the pen. <laughs> where I fucked up that other thing. Um, yeah, Travis was a, a good... I, found out about his stuff in high school and I like met him and then when I started working on the Lucas Brothers I was really nervous about it because I was like oh like I'm gonna draw my drawings for some other dudes what should I do yeah. so I called Travis and I was like what should I do uh -huh. and Travis was like gave me really good advice he, was, he said it's so hot in here no, he didn't say that that's how I feel um, he said uh, you should put your art everywhere, like your obey, and that's when I started drawing the same shit again and again and again. Yeah, and I think that's when people were like, "Hey, you did that thing and that thing." It is true. It's good to dial into a style. Some people never do it. You know? Yeah. 
especially like animation people, I think you get caught up in like, oh, you've got to draw in whatever style the job is that you need to do, and you get hung up in that and never get to learn about, uh, you know, uh, styling it up, whatever you call having your own style. Yeah, well, now enough. people will like pay me to do exactly what I've been doing See, again that's and again. Good, right? Yeah. Then you don't have to learn how to draw like anybody else. Yeah, it's been cool. I only know how to draw one way. Yeah. But I'm scared that people are going to get over it. Yeah. <laughs> My big fear is that people will get over it. Yeah. <laughs> but what can you do? Uh, you can't worry about that. Then you just draw a different way. Yeah. You know? But then sometimes that happens and then you're ready to do it. That happens to some of the more artsy guys I know. Like, you know who Tim, Tim Biscuit is? Uh, yeah, like, I can't remember anything about him, yeah, but I know but he would like draw, he was like an animation background painter, and then he became like a super, super fancy fine artist, and then like, when he got bored of his own style and switched it up to a new style, like everybody was like, that's cool, because it's time for a new style. Yeah, I've been really bored of the way I've been drawing, Yeah, but I like, <laughs> I keep getting asked to do animation stuff. And that stuff's so hard, it's like, I feel like if I don't do it the way I've been doing it, it's going to take me a lot longer. So I think what I need is to win a bunch of money where I don't have to work. All right. And then I can yeah. have the time to come up with a new style. Perfect. Well, let's work on that. Yeah, if there's any sort of... Have you played the lottery recently? Not recently. Okay. Well, person now. I don't know. Have you played the lottery recently? I haven't. I guess I'm missing out too. We're stupid. Yeah. I'm drawing the extra uh, veins and stuff on the ding dong. Okay, cool. I left that open for you. Yeah. So I tried to get you to quit school and Hend tried to get you to quit school and then she succeeded and you started doing a lot of those uh, gifts and stuff, right? For ADHD. You have, you have yeah, I did like when I got there they had maybe made like 13 or 14 gifts yeah. and then I made the next 80 of them whoa 80 made 80 gifts and then how long did it take to make 80 gifts I was making like a few a day because I wasn't really doing anything else when I started there because yeah. I started there when they had just started so it was like 20 of us in a house and I was like the young dude I turned 21 there yeah. I was a little guy but I just made gifts all day and then I eventually uh, like, pitched them some ideas, and we made shorts together, and I made a short called Gosh Josh, Weird Beard, and um, they liked the way that looked, and that's how I ended up making, or designing the Lucas Bros. I remember the Weird Beard one. That yeah. was cool. There's a guy, isn't his beard just keep growing or something? So, yeah, the guy's beard is really long, and yeah. it, like, it, it, like, warps and stretches and fucks with him and he eventually tries to kill himself because he's so sad. <laughs> is, is that what happens in the short? He tries to kill himself? Yeah. You obviously didn't watch it, but it's true. <laughs> <a show. laughs> um, so of these, these gifts that you made, do you have a favorite one? Um, actually, the first couple ones I made I think are really cool. Which one is that one? Mm, uh, there's one where a dude's face morphs into a slice of pizza. I think that's a classic ADHD thing. Yeah. Pizza. People love pizza these yeah. days. Well, they were like, decided pizza was their spokesperson because yeah. they were on Saturday night and they figured people eat pizza on Saturday. Um, that's the stuff that they do? Yeah. So, and what else? Any other favorite gifts? Um, there was one of two people, and they kept looking over at each other. And whenever they would look at each other, they would, the other one would look away. Yeah. It was about awkwardness, you know? Yeah. It was more conceptual. It was a conceptual gift. Yeah. <laughs> right what should I draw? Do you have some uh, ideas? Uh, yeah, draw pizza. Okay. We were talking about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll draw the ADHD logo. Right on. I'll draw a pizza. I designed the logo. Nice. I think I designed it as an intern. So. Nice. You getting good like internet residuals? No, I got zero internet residuals. Yeah. 
that's my main problem. <laughs> yeah. the, all the stuff I do is on the internet right now, and like, I mean, some of it's on TV, but some of it's on the internet, and like, people just get everything for free on the internet. Yeah, people don't want to pay for the internet. Yeah, why not? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I'm just gonna figure that out one of these days. So anyway, so you, you said uh, doing those gifts, they were like, hey, we like the way Sean draws. Let's have him draw the Lucas Brothers cartoon. Or through, yeah, through Gosh Josh. Yeah, through yeah, the short. The yeah. Gosh Josh. So how Is that a background and all that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, how did that come about, the Lucas Brothers thing? Did they just say one day, like, hey, start drawing it? No, it's actually really weird. They were having a meeting with Pepsi. It's like a pretty cool corporate thing. They're having a meeting with, is this illegal to talk about? They're having a meeting with Pepsi to get advertisement space. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, Sean, we have this meeting. Could you draw this uh, show idea really quick so we have something to put on the PowerPoint? Yeah. And I was like, OK. And I drew one of the Lucas brothers. They're twin brothers. I drew one of them. And I copied and pasted it. And I flipped it. Yeah. And I handed it to them. Do they have like different facial hair or anything? They got nothing so different about that. Exactly they do it on purpose. Same. It's their shit. There you go. No. You're really good at drawing, man. Your I drawings the, make me look Matt, bad. This one isn't so good, I gotta say. Um, I met uh, those guys, and I think because I was with Nick, they pretended oh, yeah. to know me. Like they were afraid that they, you know how like it's a pretty Hollywood thing to do to like. If you're not sure if you met someone, you're like we met before, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it, like gave me the 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 hug and everything. Whoa. And I didn't. I didn't. I was the first time I met them. But they're nice. I mean, they gave me a hug the first time I met them. So they're pretty nice. They're pretty weird. Yeah, that's a pretty nice thing to do. You got to be pretty weird to have a person that looks just like you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you you drew all the character designs for that show, right? Yeah, I drew. Did you draw yeah. the background designs? Too? I did the first Were you couple the art backgrounds. Director? I was the art director. Neat. What does an art director do for people who don't know about art directing? Um, I don't know how it works other places, but what I did was I drew all the main characters, and then I had a bunch of people helping me draw backgrounds, and sometimes even when there's too many characters to draw. People would help me do those, uh, but I did most of them. I can actually, there's probably like name most of the ones I didn't do. And then there was like three character designers besides me, and then like four background artists. And then at the end of the day, the other character designers helped do like turnarounds. What's a turnaround? A turnaround. I know what it is. I'm for, just saying for the internet people. For the internet, uh. a turnaround is a. Is a character from like all different angles like a front view yeah a three-quarter view yep. a profile yeah a back three-quarter a back view yeah sometimes you one? gotta do two three-quarters because yeah. you got a weird haircut that's yeah not the same. my stuff's pretty symmetrical but yeah we had to do that a couple times yeah um and then they did special poses which are like so like I designed the Lucas Bros, but every episode like the Lucas Bros are like jumping off a cliff what do they look like when they jump off the cliff what did they look like when they were jumping off the cliff? I can't remember, but... Were they scared? They looked scared. <laughs> I would be scared. But yeah, I don't know. So at the end of the day, all the designers uh, turned in their stuff, and then it was sent to me, and I would give notes. My notes were mostly like, that's cool, dude. Or like, could you make his eye bigger? Or whatever, that kind of stuff, you know? And then the background too. When you asked her, were they, did they get mad at you? Did they rebel against you? When I gave notes, giving notes is the worst. Actually, when at work made fun of me, they said whenever I gave a note, I would say, um, you know, if I was you, I would do this. <laughs> but I don't know what I'm talking about. Do whatever you want. <laughs> and I ended everything with, I don't know what I'm talking about. Do whatever you want. And normally they would listen to me. <laughs> how'd that work out? Did they, were they? They just knew that, that I was a stupid weirdo. <laughs> and... But it was really fun. I, I really like uh, working. I feel like making a TV show is like being in a really big band. Yeah. It's like being in, what's that shit called? Like Poly, Parliament. Polyphonic Spree? Yeah, or them. What yeah. was the one you said? Parliament. How many people are in Parliament? Like fucking 17 or something. It's insane. Cool. They're like, I, is it I've a seen funk them. band? Yeah. Cool. And like, 
it, it, there, it's a yeah. They, like George Clinton's like seventy five years old and he still is, like goes on tour and every show is like five wow. hours long. It's insane. Wow. I thought when you said George Clinton, I thought you meant Bill Clinton's like brother. No, well, maybe. Yeah, who knows? I don't know about their families. <laughs> yeah, so we talked about like drawing cartoon guys that were your influences. Oh yeah. You got uh, music-y guys that were your influences. All right, let me talk about influences really quick. Yeah. Lori D is a really cool animator. Have you seen her stuff? That's great. She's my favorite. All right, cool. Uh, Amy Lockhart. Have you seen her stuff? She's really good. She's she, she like, I think so. Yeah. She did a film called Walk for Walk. I know. Nice. Um, Stefan Gruber, you. What about music? Music guys. Yeah. Uh, I really liked Sonic Youth when I was a kid, and then when I started going to shows, it was a. Uh, I loved. Uh, this band called Abe Vigoda and No Age, all these LA bands. Oh yeah, I'm wearing this shirt, it's The Smell. Oh. It's where I used to go see shows when I was a kid. It's an all ages venue. This is Frank, he's the homeless guy who hangs outside. Nice, does he wear that shirt? This shirt that yeah. he's wearing on the shirt? Yeah, yeah, he wears that shirt. All right. And they put him on the shirt and part of the money went to him. Oh, that's cool. He said find his nice. like alcoholism or whatever. Does that work out well for him? Yeah, I think so, he's doing good. Nice. And there's another homeless guy named Daniel that's always there. They're both really funny and weird. Right on. Daniel just went to jail recently and came back. Did he have good stories? Yeah, he was like, it was really dark, man. It was the craziest time ever. And then I was like, I, I gotta go. <laughs> and I walked away. He carries around a knife. He's kind of a scary dude. Do people write songs about those guys? Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Daniel was in a band called Daniel and the El Salvadorians, the yeah. homeless person. Who hangs out outside the smell was in a band with Dean from the band No Age. So, you know homeless guys who've been in bands. You yeah. You know homeless guys who became animators. Uh, JJ Villard yeah. <laughs> is one homeless person that became an animator. Yeah. I was practically homeless. Yeah. Yeah. How did, how did what? I was living on my girlfriend's couch at the time when I was working at ADHD. Yeah. Well, that's that's pretty much homeless. That's pretty much homeless. She thought so. Yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Most homeless people become musicians. Yeah. Yeah, because it's easier. Animation, you need to get. Yeah. You could probably get a lot of like practice being like a street performer. Harder to be a street animator, I think. Yeah, so it's I true. Tried it. Well, the thing about animation is you need a bunch of stuff to do it. That's why I'm telling you, yeah. it's not as cool as music. Yeah. There's too much stuff you got to do. Wait a second. Is that what you said? It's not as cool as music. I mean, it's different. Is what I said. It's different. Isn't that the title? What's the title of this one? I don't about? remember. Music and drawing. Is music different. versus music. Drawing is different than music. Something like that. Is this bad? Should we stop? No, I'm just kidding. This is, this is, you know, we're, we're is mine going to get cut? Did you know we're almost done? We're pretty close. To Are people going to listen to this? So let's see. What else? Uh, what else? I should have done funny voices. Let's see if I... Oh, you've done some music videos, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I've done some music videos. Um, I did a music video for uh, Haji Beats and Left Brain of Odd Future. Yeah. And... I did a music video for this guy named Michael Ralt from Canada. He's really cool. I'm working on a thing for... Are Canadian people cooler? Canadian people are way cooler. Yeah. Nicer. So much nicer. I might, I'm supposed to be doing... I don't know if this is a secret. I don't know what's secret and what's not secret. But I'm supposed to do a video for a band called Unknown Moral Orchestra. Whoa. And then we were talking to that other dude. But that's a secret. That one might be a secret. That one's a secret. That'll probably we'll probably be making make that or not making it. We don't know. This goes on we don't internet. even know. Who can know? We'll add it in. We'll, we'll ADR add it. it. In. Yeah. We'll um, like, that's like great band. The secret band I is. Want to say their name? Yeah, this other one, the Unknown Moral Orchestra thing. I'm talking to New Zealand. They give money to bands. They give them grants. Yeah. So it's a grant that's paying for it. That's a cool country. Isn't that cool? America doesn't do that. No way, man. You gotta make it on your own. 
Is turn around two words or one word? I think you can make it whatever way you prefer. I'll just do some arrows. Um, so it's like you did some like uh, fine art stuff, right? Two fine yeah. art. So you work with Ben Jones, right? I work with, with BJ. Him. Yeah, was he, he give you any advice on that fine art stuff? Yeah, his advice was it should be really expensive. Yeah. If no one buys it, pretend like it's sold yeah. and throw it away. Um, that was really the advice he gave you? Yeah, this is real stuff he told me. Nice. He told me about acrylic wash, which I'm really into. Yeah? It's this, like, gouache paint that goes on really flat, like cartoony. Yeah. Just perfect for what we do. So is that what you've been painting? I used acrylic gouache at the last art show I had. What was the last art show you had? It was uh, at this place called It's Fisk in Portland. It's a really cool place. And they have really good art shows. Yeah. I did the first one, and you now did the first one. I did the very first wow. one. And now are they blowing up? Now they are blowing up, and uh, it's really good. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Everything there has been really good. I've been really impressed with everything they've done. Nice. Are you planning on doing any more of them fine art shows? Yeah, maybe they actually fit. It's Fisk asked me to come back, and they were talking about maybe doing a. A thing where I like live there for a month and make all the art. That's there. like a, a residency. residency. They're talking That's about me doing a residency. residency. That's kind of like what we got going on with our pal JJ up here. Yeah, JJ <laughs> looks like he has a residency. Here. Yeah. <laughs> he deserves a residency. He does. Though. Hey, um, you gonna do it? This residency? I want to. We're just ever. It's all talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when the Lucas brothers pretended to know you. Like, yeah, yeah. people just like yeah. bullshit so much. Yeah. I can't trust anybody. Huh. <laughs> um, uh, no one's gonna want this. Yeah. So when, when you did, did you listen to did you listen to um, Ben Jones' advice? How much did you sell your? I didn't. I didn't store? listen to him. Yeah. I made them cheap. But okay. looking back, I should have made them expensive. He sold. I heard this is the truth. Uh, Ten million dollars. His first painting was sold for. Right. It, it's. it's Ten, ten, Jones? ten million dollars. Your first painting. My first painting. Yeah, mine was only ten million. Yeah. Mine was ten million. It was ten million, but yeah. the guy. And it was actually, small. It was like this he big. He actually paid twelve million. He paid twelve million because it was so, so bad. I mean, so good. He loved it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of there's it, art is weird like that, because, you know, there's always the dad who goes to the art show that's like, what? This is. Thousands of dollars? My four-year-old could have done this. Yeah. But then if you don't sell it for thousands of dollars, then what makes it any different than the four-year-old's thing? You know? and how old were you when you painted it? Maybe it yeah. was drawn by like a 22-year-old or something. Yeah. Or a 23-year... How old are you now? I'm 23. Yeah, sorry. For I'm old. Age, right? I'm really old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning 24 in September. Neat. You want to come to my birthday party? Yeah, sure. I'm invited to your birthday. If you want to nice. be there. And all you guys are invited. <laughs> Where's it going to be? Um, on the internet. At uh, the Subway in Silver Lake. Awesome. The Subway Sandwich Place. I love one? Subway. Is that the best Subway? It's not the best, but it seems like just for all my friends, like it's the most like in the middle geographically for everybody to kind of meet. Does it have that same smell that all the subways have? Yeah. Someone told me recently that the bread at Subway uh, has like the same stuff that's in yoga mats. Isn't that interesting? Uh, it's probably true if somebody told you that. Yeah, I just looked you up You see that documentary Jared. Fed Up? Fed Up? No. Katie Couric, you know who Katie Couric yeah. is? She made that documentary fed up. Is that about Subway? It's, it's all about like how fucked up food is and how there's all weird shit in there. Is so it? She, they probably talk about yoga mats being in Subway bread. That's cool. I like yoga mats. I bet Katie Gork knows about that. We should call her. Are you friends with her? She make cartoons? Yeah. I'm totally friends with her. Who else makes cartoons? Um. Well. I'm getting here for a guy. Uh. I don't know if you've heard of this guy, it's, uh, it's, uh, Walt Disney. I've never heard of him. Yeah, he's a cartoon maker. Um, also, uh, the Warner Brothers. 
Oh, the so twin brother cartoons. The, the twin brother comedy team, the Warner Brothers. Yeah, they look exactly the same. Uh, Identical. Hannah and Barbara. Are they twin brothers as yep. well? Also twin brothers. Um, the Olsen twins make cartoons. The Olsen twins. A lot of lot of brothers. Yeah. Make cartoons. Yeah, mostly brothers. Do you have brothers? Do I have brothers? No, I only have a sister. Yeah. Does your sister make cartoons? No. I don't know why. I don't know what she's doing. Mm. Does she make music? Uh, no. Mm. Uh, she might. We don't talk that much. Yeah. <laughs> Did you come from any kind of like artistic genes? Yeah. Like my dad played the trumpet. Oh, nice. Um, Is my, he good at it? Yeah, he's a real shredder. But he doesn't play as much. What do you do? How do you play the trumpet? Like, was he in, like, he an played orchestra? It, no, he played in bands. He had his own band where he, like, sang and then, like, busted out trumpet solos. Was he, like, in, like, big band kind of bands? Like, I think like, maybe, like, maybe in school. He owned a coffee shop and when I was a kid and they had jazz music a lot mm. at the coffee shop. Dude, this one's getting so crazy. <laughs> That's what happens. It's getting crazy. <laughs> Um, and my mom was an actress when she was a kid, I think. Oh, nice. So, uh, what's she acting? I don't know. She ended up managing people. Yeah? Which I think is real boring, but she was into it. <laughs> <laughs> I think so acting's really boring, anymore. too, to be honest. What? She doesn't manage I anymore. I think, I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> Both of my parents are, like, old now. And, like, my mom lost some of her hearing. They chill at home a lot, I know. They geocache. Do they geocache? They geocache. I didn't Another know what it was until really they started. Geocaching. It's cool. When it I makes them happy. <laughs> Korea with him, we went geocaching in Seoul, Korea. Well. We found shit, but it was written in Korean, so we didn't know what it said. Um, it was pretty cool. Geocaching's weird. Geocaching. We done? All right, I think we're done. So um, check it out. This was another installment of the Tongue and Pencil. This one is called Drawing is Different Than Music. Sean, co-creator of this podcast, coined it. Thank you. Do uh, you have any parting words? Do you have um, anything you want to plug? Yeah. Uh, Never surrender. Don't drink orange juice and milk at the same time. Uh, don't drink and drive. Uh, eat before you drink. Right? Eat. Don't get a tummy ache. Yeah, yeah, like I had some pizza. pizza I, had like, right? I, had, I had like half a slice. <laughs> I'm not disgusting. <laughs> um, do you, <clears throat> that's, is that still relevant in 2015? Do you, do you, you can do whatever you want, you just have to do it. So many people told me that I wouldn't be able to ever draw and look at Chris at the same time. <laughs> and you and did. Look where I fucking you am, did. you guys. <laughs>